How's it going, fellow club members? This is Leo Damascus with the Steam Controller Fan Club, and today we're going to take a look at the mouse joystick to see if we can understand these new options that popped up in a recent update. The first question to answer when talking about mouse joystick is what exactly does mouse joystick mean? So what happened was when Valve designed the Steam Controller, they intended the right trackpad to work kind of like an emulated trackball so that that way you would get the precision of mouse movement that is required for a lot of PC games, but from a controller and have it still be comfortable to hold in your hand. But it turns out that in order to do that they needed they needed games to support mouse camera movement at the same time as regular gamepad movement. And a lot of games just didn't support that. So what they decided to do was come up with this mouse joystick option. And what that does is it sends the equivalent joystick commands, the equivalent right analog stick commands, that would create the kinds of mouse movements that you do with a trackball. And it's something that's very clever and a, and a good way to make use of it. But at the same time, because it was a mouse joystick, it meant that you were dependent a lot on the in-game sensitivity, so they'd usually just tell you to crank the heck out of that thing. Or you would be dependent on these joystick X output value or Y output value minimums right here in order to be able to get rid of any dead zones or get some actual movement out of the thing or be able to crank it down in order to to get the precision that you needed. But let's actually take a look at what these do. First thing that we're going to do is crank these down to minimum and then we're going to see how that affects in-game. This is Transformers Fall of Cybertron. It's one of those games that that has those same kinds of things and you can see when I put the minimum down that it barely moves unless I do these really big movements and most of the time I can move and it won't even move at all so that's definitely a bit of a problem now if we go back in and we crank this up all the way you're going to see that we have a different kind of problem. So get that cranked up. Resume game and you'll see that now we have this kind of jerky camera movement when I'm moving very slowly. And it's also doing a whole lot of movement. And that's because that's setting the minimum amount that the configuration software is going to say that you're pushing on this emulated digital joystick that they're creating. So normally you want to have it somewhere around where, where Valve has it. And then in the most recent updates to the mouse joystick settings, they created these, this enhanced small movement precision and this custom movement curve. So by default, it was set down to zero in the new one so you would have something kind of like this where actually it's easier to see if we crank up the the x output value and y output value here so i'm gonna do that just to just to exaggerate and make it clear exactly what this small movement thing is doing but you see, any time that it detects a movement, there's this big jerk into the general section that it's sending to. So, 
you'd have something of a jerky movement with the way that it was originally set up. Now, if we are, however, to crank this enhanced small movement precision thing up to max, you're going to see that if I hold still, there's a bit of jitter going on, but the general movement appears a little bit more like what you would expect for these kinds of movements. It's, a, it's exaggerated, but you can still see what's happening is that it's increasing the, the pulling rate so that it can pick up on those tinier movements of the gyro. So normally what you want to do is have it somewhere in the middle so that if you're holding still enough it will mostly hold still. Let's see if we can figure out a good way, but you want you want to be able to hold still when you're not moving. But also be able to move fairly well and fairly in fairly small increments when you're when you're moving in general. So there's still a little bit of jitter there, but it's not enough that I would really care if I had the the joystick output values right where I expect them to be. And anyway, that's what the small movement precision does. The next change that they made is this custom response curve. So you can see that right now I have it set to the lowest possible setting. And if we can get back in game, you can see that allows me to do these very small movements. But if I were to crank the heck out of this, you see that graph visualizes kind of what it's doing. What it's going to do is try to try to reach max a lot faster. So let's actually set these back to the default because I think it'll be clearer that way exactly what's going on. We'll set this right back to the bottom so that you can see there's kind of a stickiness going on here. But if we go in here and we max out the custom response curve, that's going to bring us to that max value a whole lot faster. And so you can see we have a bit of an increased sensitivity, but at the same time, because we have we don't have the minimum maxed out, even though we're getting that speed, it's not as clunky with these small movements. So here's the way that I recommend doing the mouse joystick. I usually try to keep the output values at their at their minimum values and I kind of like a strong strong sensitivity so I like to do the custom response curve about as far as I can without seeing an appreciable difference in the minimum probably about there and then for the small movement precision I found that for me it's about eight ticks back is what I prefer to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now yeah, let's do two more. So if we go in here, that feels much better. And so now I'm getting fairly smooth movement here. And again, if, if, if it doesn't quite feel right to you, you can change those settings and be able to figure out what looks good to you. But for me, this is great. See, I can hit, hit these guys, keep track of them while I'm rolling fairly well. It might be worth 
might be worth messing with it a little bit more. But there you go. That should be... That should help those of you who like to play these games with out access to the gamepad and the mouse at the same time so that you can make full use of the Steam controller. So that you can have your trackball there. Uh, as far as the output values go, mostly I recommend using those as kind of a an anti-dead zone stand-in. And so you can use that to, to shape them that way. But that is it. So I'll see you guys in the next club meeting. This is Leo Damascus, signing off for now. Take care, guys.